If you've never seen the camps, the first thing that strikes you is just the scale of displacement that these camps are hosting. It's unbelievable. There are over a million people living in this camp. I've been all over the world, many refugee camp settings, but I've never seen anything on the size and scale of this campsite. The way people live is incredibly precarious. Despite the five years, only temporary shelters are allowed inside the camps. What we've seen over five years with the continual floods, monsoons, landslides, is that these shelters, they have deteriorated. Um, and because of that, we see you know, a real increase in the spread of certain infectious diseases. During heavy rains, it will be flooded. There will be landslides. There will be shelter that is lost. Populations will displace and they will have to move and find alternative solutions. It is an incredibly poor setting to manage an additional emergency on top of the existing chronic emergency that people face every day. It's been a huge effort to introduce quality water provision and meet a minimum standard for the management of waste across the camps. Given the scale and size and the geography of the camp, which is a really hilly tract of land, a huge amount has been achieved to try and put these systems and services in place. But what we see is that those systems and services, they're not the same everywhere. There are some camp settings that actually have quite poor water and sanitation. There are, there are other areas that have much better access. To. We also see that the provision of water and the management of waste is still at an absolute minimum according to emergency standards. And that's quite inadequate to improve the daily living conditions inside the camp. As a medical organization, we see a real increase in the incidence of skin infections. One example specifically the widespread infection of scabies between families and between communities and even between camps. We see an increasing number of people coming to our facilities with chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, asthma, and there simply is no provision for those conditions in many of the other medical settings outside of MSF's own medical services. So we're overwhelmed by a demand coming from way beyond the catchment area of our clinics. Uh, for people coming seeking care for chronic diseases. We see is a growing number of people complaining of respiratory tract infections, so coughs, chest problems, etc. And alongside this, watery diarrhea, and intestinal diseases, again indicating a lack of adequate sanitation, hygiene practices, access to clean water. And this is a clear marker, it's a red flag, that the provision of water and the management of sanitation is inadequate. Across the camp, there's quite a, a wide range of medical services, but they vary considerably in terms of the consistency, the availability, and the quality of those services provided. Very often, we'll have patients arriving at MSF facilities that have traveled a long way, where supposedly they have services available closer to them, but they tell us that those services are not functioning or those services have referred them to us. Containment is a very complex reality in, in these camps. And so the camp is now entirely surrounded by a fence. The camp is divided into a number of individual camps. You have to pass through checkpoints to go from one camp to another. And therefore it, it further contains a community that is 100% dependent on assistance. And when you speak to them, they tell you many different examples about how this affects their daily life how it's insecure, how it's difficult if you want to get out, how you can be detained and even locked up if you're found not to be in the camp that's been designated to you. It's very clear that funding commitments are uncertain towards Bangladesh, towards maintaining this level of support and care for the Rohingya population here in Cox's Bazaar. Funding is going to be a real issue, and yet the situation and circumstances of these refugees has not changed, it has not improved, and it probably will not change fundamentally in the coming years. It seems unlikely there'll be a political solution that would allow them to return to Myanmar. Across the medical service sector, we expect to see a reduction in the availability of funding and, and therefore a reduction in the services that are currently being provided. We're already facing a burden on our own clinics, forcing us as Medicine Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, to expand the services we're providing. So we'll be under a lot more pressure in the coming years to ensure adequate healthcare.
Underpinning everything is this issue that having fled from Myanmar with no legal protection being afforded by any state around the world, they find themselves effectively stateless. That means that even if you can provide for their daily needs, um, even as a bare minimum, they have very few freedoms. They have no rights, essentially, and they have no state that is assuming responsibility to ensure their protection. So they fall victim to many different influences inside the camp setting, and they have very, very few options to seek protection and support, given that they have no formal recognition as a population at all. This situation is not going to be resolved quickly. It's going to take some time to find the change that these people need. So we MSF will do everything we can to not only continue to provide medical services, but really to advocate internationally and regionally to find longer term durable solutions because this community is living in a, a state of collective despair. This population cannot be forgotten.